Do you have any other messages for pharmacists? I mean, pharmacists who might be interested in developing a practice in dermatology. I would say to that is that every patient um, is, bear that in mind for every single patient um, about their skin. We all put moisturiser on our skin, some part of every day, uh, hand cream, face cream, anything. So your patient is going to need to do that as well. So to recognise how important um, controlling the patient's skin is and make, and allowing the patient to be comfortable in their skin, despite whatever else is going on for them in hospital. Their skin condition, always have a look to see if the patient is um, got any skin conditions, whether they're on any medications associated with skin condition or whether um, they're on any, um, any creams or any injections or tablets. Always look out for that. That might not be the reason that the patient has been brought into hospital. They may have so they've something else going on or they've got an infection. We need to ensure that the patient's skin um, is catered for. Um, obviously, stop any immune suppression if the patient has got any um, infections and always look to see has the patient got any dermatology creams and things which will need prescribing, get them prescribed. If we ignore the patient's skin at that point and focus on the patient's you know, primary concern, which is absolutely the first thing to do, and the patient's skin isn't a problem at that point, if we forget about the dermatology medicines and um, the patient then skin might then become a problem and flare up. So it's really important to always bear this in mind. Now, what would you say to people who are wondering whether a career in dermatology pharmacy was worth pursuing? Well, I would say absolutely, definitely, yes. Um, it's fantastically interesting, dermatology. It's not just that tube of cream that you might see sitting there on the shelf. There's so, so much more to dermatology than, than you know, what you might think on the face of it. Um, there's there's the, the creams and the topicals that the patient will use. There's the um, tablets that the patient might take. Um, there's biologic medicines and there's a whole load of immunology um, there with that as well. There's thousands of skin conditions as well. And it's just really interesting. Lots of... Um, unlicensed or off-label medication is used within dermatology as well and specials um, um, with the topical treatments as well because not all of it you know is licensed and we go to the specialist manufacturers so there's so much so much to do in dermatology and it's, it is really interesting once you scratch that the surface of it and got more specialist and got really interested and um, got into it there's so much more to do. Hmm. That's a great pitch for dermatology. Is there an organisation or interest group for pharmacists in dermatology? So if I were thinking of starting, um, are there people that I could talk to? When I first started as a dermatology pharmacist, um, I wasn't aware of any other groups that I could get involved in that was, you know, specialist to just um, a dermatology pharmacist. Um, so I thought I was kind of the only dermatology pharmacist <laughs> for, for a few years. Um, and then I more recently in the last um, t uh, three years or so, I became in contact with um, another pharmacist, um, Arlene Maguire, who's in uh, London in, in Guy's and St. Thomas's. Um, so she was she was the first real dermatology pharmacist that I, I became in touch with. And we've been a dermatology pharmacist um, for the similar length of time. Um, so Arlene has uh, had already set up um, a dermatology specialist dermatology pharmacist group on the NHS networks. So that is certainly a, a you know welcome um, any dermatology pharmacist or pharmacist with an interest in dermatology, both secondary care and primary care, um, to come and join us um, in in that group. In the last couple of years, um, I've become one of the um, members to found a. Um, Specialist Dermatology Pharmacist Network Group national, for national, um, uh, on a national level. Um, so we've we have had we've had some meetings to um, um, to try and aim to um, increase you know um, education and within dermatology for pharmacists. Um, and we held a face to face meeting um, last year. 
Um, that that was a great um, that was a great meeting to get those group of dermatology pharmacists together, um, get to know each other, um, not feel so sort of on your own, really. And my last question: Can you tell us a bit about the British Association of Dermatologists pharmacist work stream? More recently, the British Association of Dermatologists are setting up a um, um, some resources for dermatology pharmacists. So I'm part of the pharmacist work stream, uh, working with with other members of the um, uh, of, of the group to um, set up some um, educational resources for um, um, primary care pharmacists um, to upskill them into dermatology. Um, um, more specialist dermatology area and also for um, secondary care pharmacists um, with some resources such as you know um, example job descriptions example business cases um, and then um, signposting to some educational um, resources as well and educational components that are already in existence and so signposting towards that um, to be able to allow pharmacists to um, or help um, get the pharmacists into these roles or create this role within the um, dermatology team. Mm, Marvellous to have the support of the BAD. It's absolutely fantastic to um, know that they are um, it's on their radar. Claire Bryant, thank you very much for sharing your insights with us today. That's been really inspiring. For more information about Claire Bryant's work and links to dermatology pharmacist interest groups, please follow the links in the description. And be sure to subscribe for more news, videos and journals. For updates straight to your inbox, please follow the link below. And thanks for watching.